Carly, you first met Oscar Pistorius in 2007. Um, can you tell me sort of how that came about and, and a little bit about the man that, that you met that day? Yeah, I had just started my career as a sports journalist and I pitched an idea to him to, to maybe run around the track and I couldn't believe that he was, um, he was so game for the idea and uh, pitched up at the track and um, we, had a, we had a bit of a race and, and we chatted and he was very casual in the way he you know, took off his prosthesis and put his blades back on and gave me details about, you know, what, what, why his legs got amputated at such a young age. And um, he told me ba that he used to play rugby back at school, which completely surprised me. And actually he began his athletics career because of a knee injury he picked up playing rugby. Um, he, my impressions of him were just that he was very friendly, very approachable. He seemed very up for anything pretty much and and from then on we we got along really well every time I saw him again and we used to t exchange text messages and I just found him a very friendly very approachable person. So fo following that interview what, was there a lot of interaction over the years and like you said, what kind of relationship developed? There was quite a bit of interaction he used to spend he used to spend a lot of months during the year in Italy he had a training camp there that he used to spend about six months of the year training at and he used to send me text messages from training camps just updating me on his training and um, asking me what was going on in my life and um, we had a, a, a we got a, got along really well and um, aside from those text messages when he came back to South Africa I used to bump into him at functions and there were many interviews after that first interview and we had a we had a pretty good relationship. So fast forwarding to that day in 2013, uh, February 14th, when the news broke that um, Oscar had shot his girlfriend, uh, where were you and you know, how did your day go, you know, how did you feel that day when you, when you heard that news? I was actually covering a Sheffield Shield cricket match at the SCG. There weren't many people at the stadium and I was on Twitter and I started to see these tweets coming through and I just, I was... I couldn't believe it. Um, I thought my immediate reaction was this has been a tragic mistake because I know that it's happened in South Africa where there's been an intruder and, and someone has accidentally shot someone or you know intruders in South Africa is not an uncommon thing so my first reaction was I felt really sorry for him um, and then as the news started coming through I started thinking you know, my mind started changing a little bit. Maybe he was too quick to fire the weapon, and um, yeah. But it was a it was a really horrific day, and I started seeing tweets coming through from even Reva's friends who weren't sure if it was her because the relationship had been so new that um, they were they, they weren't sure if it was her that had been shot or not. And it was a it was a very kind of traumatic day, I guess. You grew up in Johannesburg, so you have a first-hand account of the threat of crime. If you could give us an insight into your experience. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, growing up in Johannesburg, I, I, know, I know more people than not who have been affected by crime, and my house was broken into numerous times. And you can assume that when someone's broken into your house, they've, they've got a gun. They're, they're not there for, for petty crime. It's, it's really, it could be pretty violent. So um, I experienced it with, with my father like a year before I moved to Australia. We had intruders came into the house, they jumped over the wall, there was electric fencing, it didn't matter. And um, my dad immediately grabbed his gun and um, he, he first made sure that we were all okay and it wasn't us creeping around the house. And But he didn't fire any shots. He um, called the security company and the security company came and but not before the guys got away. So yeah, growing up in South Africa, is, um, you're very aware of crime and very aware that these things can happen all the time. So I mean, in the 18 months since the, this incident happened and, and now we have uh, the beginning of the verdict um, getting underway at 5.30 um, our time, how have your feelings changed, if they have, from the day you found out at the SCG to, to now? They've changed a bit because, like I said, my immediate reaction was to feel sorry for him, and I felt like it was a, you know, a genuine accident and a tragic accident. But, you know, the more details that came through, the more you you question, you know, why would he fire four shots into such a small space without firing at least one warning shot? So, I still do believe his version of events, and and I think it will be difficult um, for the judge to to rule 
premeditated murder because I don't think there's enough evidence to disprove his story. Um, but he still he still tragically killed someone, and um, and I think most people feel like he should probably be made to pay for for taking a life.